Alright, so we're inside of Illustrator CS3 and I just want to show you how to create a 3D software box just like this uh, just so we can uh, gain some knowledge in learning how to use the 3D tools in Illustrator. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this object into Photoshop and actually paint right on top of it and create uh, some graphics to overlay onto this 3D form. So uh, creating objects in Illustrator CS3 is really easy and I'm going to show you how to do that step by step. So first thing is we're going to select from our tools, we're going to select the uh, rectangle tool here and all we're going to do is create a box about the size that we would like here and so we've now created a box. You can see the dimensions up here. It's roughly 535 by 415 and I'm sorry uh, 153 by 211 and then what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna select this box and we want to create we want to actually thin out the outline and as you can see up here in the top we have our uh, stroke uh, settings and so we're gonna knock this down to 0.5 we just want to make this a little bit thinner and we can even knock that down a little bit more to 0.25 we just want a very thin line on our box here. I'm going to zoom in just a bit so you can see that nice clean line, really simple. And we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to make this line actually a light gray, just like this one similar to this one. So we're going to go ahead and select this uh, little box down here. Now this is the background color and this is the stroke color so or the fill or this could be also the fill color so we want to select the outline color and we're gonna make this a neutral gray I'm gonna go ahead and just type in um, CCC six times um, and that's gonna give us a nice uh, neutral gray you can see that indicated here additionally you can just click up here I'm just picking the uh, web value just to make it easier and then go ahead and hit OK. So now we have this nice light gray box barely visible here and we're gonna actually make this into a 3D object very quickly and very easily just by clicking on effects and then going into 3D and then going to extrude and bevel. In CS3 this allows us to create a, um, a nice 3D effect very quickly and as you can see, just by hitting that preview button, we can now see that we have a 3D box, nice and visible here. What you may notice on the first time you create this is the perspective doesn't look so correct. As you can see here in this example, the, um, the box looks absolutely fine. But here, the perspective has not been applied yet. So in this example, um, down here you can see perspective and we're gonna just change this you can drag and slide this to whatever you like And if you keep this preview button on you'll be able to see that perspective change in real time so we're gonna put this at a hundred just to kinda see what effects it gives us and you can and you can keep that uh, perspective either extreme by going up really high as you can see it really distorts it's almost more like a fisheye lens we don't want to go quite that extreme we're just gonna get it down maybe maybe around 50 that should be sufficient for right now um, you can see the angles here I'm gonna just push the the boundaries just a little bit just make it a little bit more extreme you can also manually type these in so like let's say we wanted to make it perspective uh, seventy percent angle we could do that as well and then the neat thing is you can actually click and drag this little box and it actually moves your object in real space in a 3d um, real-time rendering so really nice little easy to do tool here you can additionally click on this if you want to rotate this box just constrained by um, the actual rotation or we can grab each one of these planes individually as well um, highlighted in red and highlighted in green just simply by clicking and dragging on these uh, specific planes so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this box just a little bit because we want to get a nice angle on it here 
and I'm going to keep this bottom, the base of it, relatively flat. You can see the angles I've made on this particular box are not quite as extreme as on the other one. Um, you can do that as well if you like. The other thing too is, like, let's say instead of a box, you wanted this to be a book. You you could also change the extrude depth down just a little bit more, make it 38. Or if you wanted to make it really thin, you could just go ahead and manually type in uh, like 15 or uh, say, you know, you, you could even knock it down to 10. And you're going to see that's going to get really, really super thin. So like let's say you wanted to make this into a book, you could do that as well. Right now we're going to keep it more like a box. I'm going to bump this up to 50. You'll see the change here. You have to kind of click away from it. So now we have this nice edge here and some dynamic shadowing going on. We want to lighten up the shadowing a little bit. So in order to do that, we're going to hit more options. And I'm going to bring this up just a little bit so you can see it. And we have some lighting tools going on here. And you can choose from different types of shading, diffuse shading or no shading. Basically, that's just going to give you a um, a white front and a side. That's fine too, but what we're going to actually end up doing in Photoshop a little bit later is using the um, the colors here just to kind of show uh, we're going to make the, the image that we're laying on top of a little bit transparent to pick up some of that shading. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this actually on diffuse shading for right now. And you can also change your ambient lighting to make it brighter or darker. We're just going to lighten this up just a little bit. And uh, we don't want to go too extreme, but at the same time we want enough light that our graphics that overlay are going to um, really convey some good three-dimensional qualities once we make it transparent. So then we're going to go ahead and hit OK on this if we like the way it looks. If you feel like the box isn't extreme enough, you can also, you know, just bump this up to 70 or whatever. I'm um, just depending on how much the rotation is. You just have to play around with it to see what really looks right. Sometimes your your perspective, um, depending on how it gets distorted, can be um, just a little bit different. I'm gonna just bump this up to 50, or actually uh, 80 here, just to bump that up just a little bit. Just kind of push that just a little bit more and then go ahead and hit OK. So now we have our 3D software box similar to the one right next to it. Um, notice this one I just made a slight bit thinner than I made this one. That's OK. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and save this so that we can open it in Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save and you can save as and we're just going to save it as box AI. I'm just going to overwrite that existing file. Go ahead and hit save and we're going to hit yes. And if this is a brand new save, you're going to get another dialog box that actually will ask you um, this one right here, Illustrator Options, create PDF compatible file. You'll need to keep this checkbox um, active with this check mark in order for it to be recognized in Photoshop. If you take this away, you're not going to be able to work with it in Photoshop very well. So I would go ahead and leave this on. The other stuff is fine. Let's so leave it for now and go ahead and hit OK. And now that box is saved. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open this in Photoshop. We're going to do that in the next video. So go ahead and uh, look at the second video. And we'll show you exactly how to lay graphics on top of this 3D box. Hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron Cox. I'll see you next time.